Hi, my name is Tola Kane, and I'm the author of the best-selling Survival Guide series, which is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iBooks. This is the third in a series of instructional films, and today we're going to talk about secret tips and tricks that you may not have seen on the iPad 2. First, I'd like to show you how to capture a screenshot. So let's say I'm looking at a map, and I want to save it as an image in my photos. Now to do that, I'll press the home button and the power button at exactly the same time. And when I do that, the screen flashes white, and the image is captured and is stored in the camera reel album in photos. So now when I go back to the home screen and go into my photos, and here's the camera roll album. I touch it, and here's my picture. Now be careful because this is very touching. So if you hold the home button for a few seconds and then press the power button, it'll actually lock the iPad, not capture a screenshot. So just be careful with that. And that is how you capture a screenshot. Next I'd like to show you a tip on scrolling to the top of a long list or a website. I highlighted this in my previous video on getting started with the iPad 2, but it's very useful. So I'm going to show it again in case any of you missed it. Let's say you're scrolling through a long list, like the spreadsheet for instance, and you get to the bottom of the spreadsheet and you want to go back to the top. Now, you could flick your finger several times to get to the top, or, once at the bottom, you can touch the very top of the screen, which is the black bar here where it says iPad and the time and the battery life, and when you touch the top, it scrolls back to the very top of the list. And that's how you scroll long lists or websites. The following tip involves saving pictures from websites in Safari. So let's say I'm browsing the internet, like this, and I come upon a picture that I want to save to the iPad. Well, I can touch and hold the picture until this menu comes up, and then touch Save Image. And the image is saved to the camera roll album in Photos. So I'm going to press Home button and touch Photos. The camera roll album is here. I can touch that and scroll to the very bottom, very last photo, is the one that I saved. And that is how you save images from the web to your iPad. Another little tip comes in handy when you're entering a lot of text on the iPad. So let's say I'm typing a long email right here, and I don't want to keep hitting the period at the end of every sentence. I just touch the space bar twice quickly, and it inserts a period automatically. So, I will finish typing this sentence, and then when I'm finished, I just hit the spacebar twice, and the period is inserted automatically. There's a hidden tip that has to do with inserting foreign characters like A with an accent, or an N with a tilde over it. So let's say I'm typing an email in English, and I want to insert a Spanish character, or a Spanish word. Well, in this case, I'm going to touch the N, and there's a menu that pops up right over it. I'm going to slide my finger over to this character, the N with a tilde over it, and release. And now the character has been inserted. And I'm going to keep typing, and I've inserted see you manana in my email. And that is how you insert a special character. Here's an especially useful trick for all you users you find yourself often downloading iPhone apps to your iPad because they're cheaper, for instance. When you download an application that's created for iPhone, it will appear in a small window, kind of like this with Skype. And you can always expand the window and display the application in full screen. To do so, just touch the 2x in the bottom right corner of the screen, which is right here. And when we touch it, the application expands to full screen mode. Now, while it won't be HD quality, as it has come to be known, it beats having to use the application in a tiny window. And if you do ever want to go back, you can always touch 1x at the bottom right of the screen. The application returns to its original mode. And that is how you view iPhone applications in full screen on your iPad. Next, I'd like to show you how to customize the application dock, which is the group of applications at the bottom of the screen, right here, that doesn't change as you navigate your home screens. To customize the application dock, touch and hold one of the icons on it, and all the icons begin to shake, like that. 
Now I can touch any icon and drag it off of the dock to remove it, or drag it onto the dock. And the dock can hold up to six icons, like this. You can also rearrange the icons by dragging them around, just like that. So I can rearrange them, put them in different locations, and I can remove the icons as well. And when you finish customizing, just press the home button and the icons are locked in place. And that is how you customize the application dock. Here's a trick for all of you app aficionados out there, especially if you have so many applications you just can't keep track of them anymore. You can always search for an application right from the home screen by pressing the home button and the search screen appears. Or you can also get to the search screen by swiping left until you get here. Now I'm going to search for the Maps application because it's somewhere in a folder and I don't know where it is. And then I'm going to touch Maps and the application opens. And that's how you search for and run applications on your iPad. So what if something goes wrong with your iPad? I'm going to show you what to do when you encounter an application that freezes up the iPad. And when it freezes, you need to reset it. In this case, simply holding down the power button does not do the trick. Instead, you need to reset the iPad. And note that doing the following, what is commonly referred to as a soft reset, will not delete any of your personal data. To reset the iPad, press and hold the home and power button simultaneously, which is what I'm doing now. Then the slide's power off appears, keep holding. The screen will go completely black, like this, and then when the Apple logo appears, you can release both of the buttons, and the iPad will now reset and turn back on. The last tip I'd like to show you is a little more advanced and involves using your PC to print out photos that are on your iPad. And this tip is especially great for those of you who don't own a wireless printer. With a Mac, it's a bit easier because you can just use iPhoto to import your pictures. And you can check out my iPad 2 book for step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. First, you're going to want to connect your iPad to your PC using this cable. And now this end will go into your iPad with this side facing up and this end connects to your USB port on your computer. And once the iPad is connected, you're going to want to open My Computer. On an XP machine, you can just double click My Computer on the desktop. So on a Windows 7 machine, we click Start, and then click Computer, right here. And when My Computer opens, you're going to click the iPad drive, in this case, Tolly K's iPad, and then click Internal Storage, and then the DCIM folder, and double click that. Then we're going to get to this 800 AAAAA folder, and double click that. And this is where all of the photos are on your iPad. Now, to print one, let's click and drag one to the desktop, and that copies it to your computer. Then right click and click print, and then the print dialog opens. And this is where you can print your photo. Now make sure your printer is connected and turned on. And this is where you choose your printer. And then you can click print. Or you can click one of these up here to change the size of the photo. So this changes it to 4 by 6 for instance. And if you want to print more than one photo at a time, we're going to click and drag a couple more onto the desktop. And click and drag to select all three right click one of them and then click print and the same dialog comes up and now all three photos can be printed at once and here they'll be printed in full page uh, size and you can also click to change the size so for instance this changes it to 4 by 6 and then click print and that is how you print photos from your iPad. And those are all the hidden tips and tricks I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments or on the Survival Guide book's profile page, or purchase my iPad 2 Survival Guide by following the link in the video description. Also, check out my other Survival Guides, which cover everything from tablets to smartphones to e-readers. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!